Hey guys, today we're going to jump into a glazing demonstration because I want to share with you what glazing is and how to use it to create better subtleties in your painting. So a glaze is a thin, transparent layer of paint spread over the top of a dry layer of paint. That's the definition. Now with this simple definition, there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of things that are possible to do. By using a lot of transparency on my blue-gray background that I found that was a little bit too muted, I'm just adding a glaze of brown and red to create an entire new tone. And by keeping my motion a little bit abstract, I'm going to create a lot of variation within the background. So my point is not to lose my details, my point is not to cover 100% what I just did. I think my painting is at a good stage and I don't want to mess it up. By adding a blue glaze on the parrot, I'm just going to increase a little bit of the saturation of blue and I'm going to make it step forward. And again, as you can see, no details are lost. You can remove some if you want to. By addition and by removing some paint, you can work like this for a long while before you have to add actual white, which is what I'm doing right now. There is barely any white, and I'm just blending it, keeping my motion abstract to create a very natural effect. You don't want to calculate everything in your motion, and I know pretty much where my light are going. I know the top left to the bottom right diagonal is something that I want to keep more bright than the other edge. So I'm rolling my brush, I'm twisting my brush, I'm adding my contrast step by step, keeping my transparency. You can see how the flowers step back with my glaze, you can still see them. Something you cannot really see on the video, but it's the way light works with glaze, is that the light is going to go through the different layers of transparency. And I don't think it's an effect you can really capture in video or photo, it's something you have to see by yourselves. It's also a very good tool to do some correction, if you feel like something is just not blue enough, or the saturation is not right, and you don't want to lose your detail, you don't want to paint everything, then you can just add a glaze or two or three, and the more you're gonna add, the more depth you're gonna create. So now I'm adding a very heavy glaze on the parrot to make it step forward and as you can see I'm not losing any details. It would have been better for me to think about these values at first, but since I am working from imagination, I cannot plan everything for this specific painting. And after you can remove part of the glaze, as you can see with my paper towel I'm just rubbing a little bit and I'm removing it. So now my paint is going to stay wet for a couple of hours because I use a fast drying medium. And I'm gonna spread some red that is a glaze for now, but this is going to become more opaque to create a good base for me to work next time. That only by adding paint and by removing some of it, I can create this whole tonality and contrast without using any white yet. And I can remove it with the paper towel or the back of my brush or I can spread it with my fingers. You can use anything. Color Shaper 2 are pretty good for this. And after with a fan brush or something softer, you can definitely come back and make it a little bit softer if you desire. Same as the tiny details in the wing that you can see now. They just have been made by removing the paint with the back of my brush. So towards the end, if you want to use an opaque color, because you see now it works it, some of the color is going to be opaque and on the edge of it is going to disappear into transparency. And that's going to be a nice result. A glaze doesn't mean you need to keep it very transparent. It doesn't mean you need to keep it super light. It doesn't mean anything else but playing with transparency. But if you want to go towards opaque, that's beautiful. It's going to create a nice base for the next layer that you're going to add. So now I'm adding a little bit of reliefs on the butterfly but I really do not want to add too much because reliefs can really be a nest for dust after a couple of years. And so my only purpose now is to create just enough relief to have a glare from the light above. And next time when I'm going to come and glaze again on this butterfly, then the paint that is very liquid is going to go inside of the reliefs and create even more variation of color. Looking a little bit on, on the branch, trying to keep your motion random and abstract to make it look natural. A little bit of burnt umber and blue to increase the value of my branch. So now that I made the flower step back so much with my previous layer, I'm gonna add some very intense color just to make it step forward again. 
and it's kind of going to create new set of petals that are now looking more inviting. And the more we add layers and the more subtle it's going to become. So the recipe I'm using myself is basically a little combination of alkyd, sand oil and mineral spirit. That is the end of the video, it's just a sample, there is so much more to say about glazing but I'm going to do more about how I glaze with different paintings and also I want to show the next layer of this one that is not done yet. <laughs>